I'm Sylvia Earle, explorer in residence at the National Geographic. I'm an oceanographer and an explorer. To be 100 miles off the mouth of the Mississippi River, nearly 2,000 feet down, all by myself, looking and just enjoying myself thoroughly, or off in, the, in Hawaii dancing with an octopus more than 1,000 feet underwater all by myself. These are things that are part of my life. It was considered a little unusual for girls to want to be scientists when I began, but it, I just didn't think of it. My parents were, were so supportive. They just, whatever you want to do, dear. <laughs> and I think because they had that attitude, I didn't know that it was unusual. I spent hours just on my own, turning over rocks, looking at beetles and my mother even brought frogs in the house for my brothers and me to, to admire. And then instead of just saying, okay, lesson over and toss them out the door, she would take us and show where the frog lived and gently put it back home. And when I was 12, my parents moved to Florida. My backyard then was the Gulf of Mexico. And that tr was truly transformative because I got to explore the ocean on my own again with hours and hours when uh, kids will do that. The kids are natural explorers. And it was natural for me just to take advantage of that built-in curiosity. In the 1960s, it was really unusual for women to go aboard a research vessel and be a scientist with male scientific colleagues. But I had a chance to do that, to go as a participant in the International Indian Ocean Expedition 1964, and I think they didn't really think it through that I would be the only woman with 70 men for six weeks at sea. The Mombasa Daily Times interviewed the 12 scientists who were included in this expedition, and we poured our hearts out about what it is we were going to do while we explored the Indian Ocean from this research vessel, the Anton Brunn. The headline the next day said, Sylvia sails away with 70 men. But the subtitle, but she expects no problems. In fact, I had a wonderful time. It's one of the best experiences for me as a scientist, seeing a different part of the planet that I, I had never imagined that I could explore before. We were the first to dive in many of the places. The fish were so innocent. But we did have a problem. We were in a boat trying to understand the great depths of the ocean from far above, and we had hooks and nets and things, but you know, what would you know of New York City if you're flying overhead, dragging a net and bringing <laughs> pedestrians and dogs and bushes, and you dump it on the deck of the ship and you say, wow, this is what New York City is all about. You wouldn't know anything about music or humor or what poetry or what people actually do. I suppose because of the years I've had, observing as a witness the nature of change on an unprecedented scale. I personally am driven to try to share the view and encourage people to connect to nature, to understand that our lives are totally linked to the natural world. If we like to breathe, if we like the fact that water magically falls out of the sky, a planet that works in our favor, we'll take care of the systems that take care of us.